Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Ubuntu installation to version 20.04. All right, guys, so I just made a video about how to install Ubuntu 20.04 onto your computer. However, if you were already running Ubuntu, you might be wondering how to upgrade your current version to the newest version. Now, for today's example, I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade version 18.04, the previous long-term support release, to 20.04, which is the new long-term support release. However, these exact same instructions should also work if you're running 19.10, which came out in October of last year. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this two different ways. First, we're going to use Ubuntu's Do Release Upgrade tool, and this is the way that you'll normally upgrade an Ubuntu installation. However, after that, I'm also going to show you how to upgrade your installation manually, or as I like to call it, using the Debian method, where we'll update our sources lists and then run the upgrade manually. The reason it's helpful to know how to do that is because sometimes Ubuntu's upgrade script does fail, it can run into problems if you've got a lot of third-party PPAs. And also, if you didn't upgrade from 19.04 to 19.10 or from 18.10 to 19.04, if you're stuck on one of those interim releases that was already end of support months or even years ago, the do release upgrade tool is not going to be very happy about that because it's only designed to upgrade from one supported release to the next supported release. So if you waited too long and you fell too far behind, it will be helpful to know how to make the upgrade manually. And with the second method, you can usually do that. So without further ado, let's cut to the desktop and get started. All right, guys, and here we are on the desktop. Now, I am on an Ubuntu 18.04 installation right now. Just to make this a little bit more realistic, I've installed a couple of third-party applications that are not in the regular Ubuntu repository, and we're going to upgrade this machine from 18.04 to 20.04. Now, we're going to do this on the terminal today. Ubuntu does have a GUI upgrader, but since you're watching a video about how to do this anyway, I'd like to show you how to do it on the terminal because it's going to give you a little bit more information, and just in case anything does go wrong, the terminal is definitely going to give you more information about what went wrong and how to fix it than the GUI normally does. So let me make this terminal a little bit bigger. And the first thing we're going to want to do before we upgrade our release version is install any available updates that can be installed right now. So to do that, we're just going to do a sudo apt update. And that's going to check all of our package lists. And as you can see, my system is already up to date because I just installed it and installed all the updates. But if you do have any package updates available, go ahead and install those using sudo apt full upgrade. And once we're done with that, we can actually move on to doing our release upgrade. So the first method is super simple. Like I said, it's the do release upgrade script that is included with Ubuntu. So we're just going to run do release upgrade and it's going to check for a new Ubuntu release. Now, as you can see, there is currently no new upgrade available according to the script. That's because Ubuntu usually waits a few days after they make a new release before they start notifying people. Now in about a week, you'll just be able to run do release upgrade and it will grab 20.04 for you. But right now we can force the upgrade using the do release upgrade script by passing in dash D, which is going to check for a development version. Now, even though the previous message told us that there was no development version available, as you can see, now we do detect that there is a development version, Focal, which is the code name for 20.04. So the do release upgrade script is going to first go through a package manager and make sure that we are actually up to date on 18.04 first. Uh, it is also going to check for snap updates since this is an Ubuntu tool. As you can see, the do release upgrade script noticed that I had Spotify and Chrome third-party repositories in my package manager, and it went ahead and disabled those for me. It says some third-party entries in your sources.list were disabled. You can re-enable them after you upgrade using the software properties tool or your package manager. Um, so it's just letting you know that, and we'll acknowledge that by pressing enter. As you can see, we're now getting the package lists for Focal. And now Ubuntu is letting us know that 56 of the packages we have installed right now are no longer supported by Canonical. That's a whole lot considering this is a default install, but that's just an indication that the default set of packages that's installed changes over time. So 16 of our packages are gonna be removed, 326 new packages are going to be installed as dependencies, and 1,393 of our current packages are gonna be upgraded. It's about a one gigabyte download. So we'll go ahead and enter Y 
to continue, and they're letting us know that our lock screen has been disabled, so the computer's not going to automatically lock. They're probably letting you know so you don't walk away expecting it to automatically lock for you. Um, so we'll go ahead and press enter again. And now we're going to go through and actually download all of the updates. This is going fairly quickly for me here since I've got a relatively fast internet connection. After the downloads are done, it's actually going to install and configure the packages. You can see there that the new desktop wallpaper was installed over the old one, and when GNOME saw that the file had changed, it went ahead and updated it live for us. All right, and here you can see we are being prompted for input. Now this is exactly why I like to do my upgrades on the terminal instead of through a GUI. I have seen cases where when this kind of thing comes up, where we need to put in manual input, the GUI upgrader can just hang because there's not always a way to display these options in a GUI if the people who wrote the GUI weren't anticipating this to come up. So this is happening because I installed Spotify and that's why I installed Spotify because I knew that this would happen. Spotify modifies the Etsy GNOME defaults.list file to make itself the default music player or the default player for Spotify links and that kind of thing. And so the desktop files utils package, which contains this file, it's been upgraded for 20.04. And the system right now is asking, well, what do you wanna do? Do you want to install the 20.04 version, which is going to overwrite any changes you've made to the file? Or do you want to keep your currently installed version, which means that you're not actually getting the updated version of that file? Now, I would usually recommend what you do is you install the package maintainer's version, because even though short term it might be more convenient to not lose your custom configuration, long term the syntax in configuration files can change and you're going to want to have a complete working configuration file, which you don't know if your current configuration file is going to work on the new version of the package or not. So with that in mind, I'm going to enter in Y. Now if you want to, at this point, hit Z to start a shell to examine the situation, or you can just open up the files app and browse and look at this file and see, you know, make a copy of it maybe so that you've got your changes backed up and try and figure out what you've changed in it. This is a great opportunity to do that. The default is to keep your currently installed version, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and install the package maintainer's version. And so I'll hit enter and we will continue on. And it looks like our regular package manager updates are done and we are now updating our snaps. Now the point of snap packages is that you've got the latest version of an application, no matter which version of the distribution you're running, and that those two things are upgradable independently. So I wouldn't be too concerned that the second method I'm about to show you does not update the snaps, but it is nice that the do release upgrade script includes it. All right, and we are done refreshing our snaps, and now we are searching for obsolete software. We still don't need to do anything. This is a step that we'll do manually when we do this the Debian way. And it's asking us now to confirm, so this is basically doing an apt auto-remove in the background, and 80 obsolete packages are going to be removed. We will hit Y and then Enter to confirm that. Okay, and do release upgrade is now telling us that the system upgrade is complete. There is a restart required right now. Uh, you can choose not to restart, but you really do want to restart after doing a full system upgrade because every single thing on the computer just got updated. So the software that's loaded into our RAM right now is no longer present on the disk. So we're going to start seeing things break if we don't reboot. So I'll go ahead and enter Y and we will reboot. All right, and you can see we do now have the new splash screen. We've got the new login screen for Ubuntu 20.04. And after I log in, you can see we do have the new desktop for 20.04 as well. So that upgrade was successful. Now if I open up a terminal and I do a sudo apt update, you're going to see that the list of package lists that we're getting does not include Google Chrome or Spotify. So these things are still installed on my system. I can still open them up, but we're not going to be getting updates for them because those repositories are not enabled right now. Now I'm going to change directories into our Etsy apt directory. And in here, we've got a sources.list. I'm going to cut out sources.list and you can see it's just got Ubuntu repositories in it. And the Google Chrome and Spotify lists should actually be inside of the subdirectory sources.list.d. So we're going to cd into sources.list.d. And inside of there, you can see we've got a Google Chrome.list and a Spotify.list. We've also got backups that were taken before they were modified, uh, marked with .dist upgrade. So these 
dist upgrade files are not going to be read by apt because they don't end in .list, but the top two files are going to be read. So let's take a look inside one of those. I'm going to do a sudo gedit dot slash google chrome dot list. And you can see we've got a comment in here that says disabled on upgrade to focal. And way back here, the line itself is commented out. So we can uncomment that and save that file. And we'll do the same thing for the spotify.list. Once again, disabled on upgrade to focal. So we can just uncomment it again. And now if we do a sudo apt update, you can see that Google Chrome and Spotify, both of those repositories are showing up in the list of repositories that we're checking. Now that actually brings us into the Debian method. The reason I call it that is because Debian does not have a do release upgrade script like Ubuntu does. When a new Debian version is released, the way that you upgrade on Debian is you update your sources.list files to point to the new version, and then you run a sudo apt update and a sudo apt dist upgrade. So we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. I am just going to shut my machine down here, and I'm going to restore a snapshot that I took before I did the upgrade to make this a bit easier. And then I'll open this right back up. So here we are back on 18.04. So as I was saying, on Debian, the normal way that you do this is you upgrade your sources.list files manually. So once again, I'm going to open up a terminal and I'm going to cd into slash etc slash apt one more time. So if you're going to do a manual upgrade, which once again, you might have to do if you're on an old unsupported version of Ubuntu, or if the do release upgrade script isn't working for whatever reason, this sources.list file right here, this is what tells Ubuntu what repositories to go out and check in addition to any files in sources.list.d that end in .list. So in order to perform a manual upgrade, you need to both update your main sources.list file and any active files inside of sources.list.d. So let's start with sources.list. I'm gonna do a sudo gedit on sources.list. And once again, here's what the file looks like. Now the code name for Ubuntu 18.04 was Bionic Beaver, or just Bionic. The code name for 20.04 is Focal Fossa, and the keyword is Focal. So what we need to do in this file is we need to go through and any active lines we need to update from Bionic to Focal. Now, how do you tell if a line is active or not? Well, if a line has a hash mark at the beginning of it, then it's commented out. This line is not having any effect. So we don't really need to update this line. We could update it. It would have no effect because it's not doing anything. So we need to go down in every single line that does not start with a hash mark. So this is our first example. This line is active because it is not commented out and we just need to replace the word bionic with the word focal. We do not need to update the next line because once again, it's commented out. So we're gonna go through the entire file. Uh, bionic updates gets updated to focal updates. And you can absolutely use said or you know, command line utilities to do this automatically. But for the purposes of demonstration here, we're just going to go through manually and do it. So we've got focal updates, uh, we've got focal universe, and we'll scroll down here to the rest of the file. Although these are commented out, we'll change bionic security to focal security. All right. So we can go ahead and save this file now, and we'll go back to our terminal. Now, once again, you do need to cd into your sources.list.d directory and check any lists that are in here. You can see since we rolled back the virtual machine and we haven't done the upgrade yet, those dist upgrade copies are not here, but we do have our active Google Chrome.list and Spotify.list. Now, if we cat both of these out, you can see that neither Google Chrome nor Spotify actually use a code name in the repository. Both of them just use the word stable. Now, if a repository just uses the word stable, then you can just leave this as is. Google always puts the stable version of Chrome for all distributions in the same pool in the repository. They do not split it up by Ubuntu version. That's why there's no code name here because it's going to be the same package version anyway. So they just kind of say, all right, everybody, it doesn't matter what version you're on, just point to the stable repository. And the same with Spotify. Now this is not the case for all third-party repositories, in particular PPAs, personal package archives that are hosted on Launchpad, which is owned by Canonical. Those repositories are going to use code names and you will need to edit them manually just like we did for the main sources.list file. So if we needed to update one of these, we would just g-edit into it or use nano or vim or whatever you want to use 
and change any instance of the old code word to the new code word. Just one last sidebar on that note, I have seen one or two repositories that use the word Xenial for every version of Ubuntu. Xenial was Ubuntu 16.04, but there are some repositories that instead of using the word stable, they just stopped updating their names after Xenial. And it doesn't have to be Xenial, it could be any word, because it's really up to the person running that repository what word you have to write here. So if you're on Bionic and you're seeing words that are not Bionic, you most likely don't have to update them. If you're on 19.10, you're going to see Eon here, because that's the code word for 19.10, so you would update all instances of Eon to Focal. If you're coming from 19.04, you would update any instances of the word Disco to Focal, because Disco Dingo was 19.04. But in this case, we've done everything we need to do. We manually updated our main sources.list, and as we can see here, none of our other sources.list.d files need to be updated. So now we can go ahead and run a sudo apt update. And as you can see, we are going to be getting a whole lot of stuff. And all of these gits are going to be pointing at focal because we've updated that configuration file. So this is sort of the manual way to do it. We just tell apt, okay, you're no longer looking for bionic. Now you're looking for focal. And since we told apt that, we can tell it to do an apt update just like normal. And then it's going to tell us that 1,393 packages can be upgraded, which is every package on the system. Now at this point, you may notice that in my videos, I usually do a sudo apt full upgrade when I update systems. You don't have to do a full upgrade all the time. Most of the time you could just do a sudo apt upgrade and that would suffice. However, it will not suffice in this case, because if we do a sudo apt upgrade, a sudo apt upgrade is not going to want to remove any packages in the course of updating other packages. And it's also not going to want to downgrade certain packages while upgrading other packages. So there are some scenarios where you have to tell the package manager, go ahead and downgrade some stuff if it means upgrading the majority of the system. And in fact, really what we're telling it is just to ignore version numbers and go with what our repositories are offering to us. Don't worry if the new version number is lower than the old one. So the command for that, since it's most often used for distribution upgrades, the command is sudo apt dist upgrade. Now, dist upgrade and full upgrade are actually the exact same command. Those two commands do the same thing. If you look in the man file for apt, dist upgrade and full upgrade are listed as the same entry. I like to do full upgrade because when I tell people to run dist upgrade, they get confused about what this does. I've had a lot of people who are running an LTS version of Ubuntu, when I tell them to do a dist upgrade and there's a newer version of Ubuntu that's been out for a while, they'll say, well, I don't want to do a distribution upgrade. I'm running the LTS version. I don't want to upgrade from 18.04 to 18.10. So then they refuse to run dist upgrade. But dist upgrade won't update your distribution's release version by itself. Dist upgrade only works in tandem with you going and manually updating your release files so that they're pointing to the new version. If this had not been done, then dist upgrade would do the exact same thing as a regular upgrade most of the time. So to avoid that confusion, I like to use full upgrade most of the time because it usually doesn't cause any extra problems and it avoids problems that can come up if you just do a regular upgrade. Now, since we're actually doing a distribution upgrade today, just for fun, I'm gonna use the actual dist upgrade command. But I just wanted to mention that dist upgrade and full upgrade are the same thing. And this is why the command is called dist upgrade because you can technically use it to upgrade your distribution. So with all of that said, we'll go ahead and hit enter. And we'll scroll up, let's see what it's actually telling us here. Apt is saying the following packages were automatically installed that are no longer required. So that stuff is going to be removed when we do a sudo apt auto remove, which we'll do after this. Apt is telling us that the following packages will be removed. For instance, firmware update signed was replaced with a package that's just called firmware update. The following new packages will be installed. So these were not part of a default install in Ubuntu 18.04, but they are a part of a default install in 20.04. For instance, you can see all of these Yaru packages at the bottom. Yaru is the name of the new theme in 20.04. And then all of these packages we already have installed, but they are going to be upgraded for the new version. So just like any other time that we're running an apt full upgrade, we can enter in Y for yes and press enter to continue. And just like with the do release upgrade script, the rest of this is really gonna be very similar. It's gonna download all of our packages first, and then after it's done downloading them, it's going to unpack them each one by one. Now you can see here that we're being asked with apt 
whether or not we want to restart some services automatically. So the do release upgrade script took care of this. And I do believe I saw the do release upgrade script restarting some services. And that is what we want. We are going to have to restart some services and we're going to reboot the computer manually when we're done anyway. But for right now, we'll go ahead and restart services during package upgrades without asking because we do just want to install all of these upgrades. And as you can see, the lock screen was not inhibited this time since we're not using the script, but I can go ahead and log back in. And once again, we're being asked the exact same question about whether we want to install the package maintainer's version of this configuration file or use our currently installed version. I'm going to answer the same way I did last time to use the package manager's version. All right, and we are finally done with all of that. Now you can see near the end, the found Linux image lines. Normally we only need to have the most recent version and one previous version of the Linux kernel installed on a system. You can see here we've got an older version, which I assume is what we're running right now in 18.04. And so to remove older clutter like that, we're going to do a sudo apt auto remove. And I'll go ahead and do dash dash purge to also purge any configuration files for packages that are being removed. We'll answer yes and that that complete. Okay, and at this point we do need to reboot manually. We don't have a script telling us to, but once again I still know that if I try and start using the computer right now, I'm probably going to run into at least one issue since the software versions that were present when this computer booted and were loaded into RAM are no longer on the hard drive. The new versions are on the hard drive now. So in order to load all of that in, we will go ahead and do a sudo systemctl reboot to restart the computer. Now, if you apply all of those operations and you reboot the computer and something goes wrong and you're not able to boot into your normal GUI desktop, one thing you might wanna try is making sure the Ubuntu-desktop package is installed. That's a meta package that depends on all of the necessary things to start a GUI in Ubuntu. So if for some reason that got removed during an upgrade, you would want to go into a TTY by pressing Control alt f 5 or if you can't even do that, ch root into your system from a live USB disk, and then run a sudo apt install ubuntu-desktop. But as we can see here, we are upgraded. I can go ahead and log in. And here we have our Ubuntu 20.04 desktop. So there you go, guys. That's two different ways to upgrade from Ubuntu 18.04 to 20.04. Like I said, the process is going to look exactly the same for 19.10 to 20.04. If anything, I would expect less issues coming from 19.10 since it's less of an update. It's only a six month update instead of a two year update if you're coming from the previous LTS. The more third party repositories you've got, the more likely it is you'll run into issues such as that configuration file thing that I just showed you. And that's why I recommend doing this from the terminal because that way you can and resolve the issues easier. If you guys have any questions while doing this, feel free to visit the forums at nerdinthestreet.com and leave your question in a post there. If you want to support me and help me make more videos, go to nerdclub.nots.co. But for now, that's everything I had to show you. So I'm Jacob Kaufman, I'm the Nerd in the Street, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.